Become a cool kid now by visiting www.fruitycoolkids.com. Good evening, assalamu alaikum, and welcome to see results on IBN TV, as well as the IBN TV Facebook page and the see results Facebook page. I am Sir Ijaz, and today being Monday, we have English language arts at 6 p.m. and myself first with mathematics. That's right now for this first hour, as we have been doing, you know, for the past several months. We know that today we were told that the, you know, the school term is on hold again. Uh, for the rest of this term into the Easter vacation, and we are yet to receive word on whether or not the SEA exam will be postponed. Um, so that being the case, we are going to continue with our preparation as usual um, and be prepared for every circumstance, you know, God willing. So today being Monday, we have to highlight uh, our students and their performances in our quizzes that we would have posted and that were due on Friday at 11.59 p.m. as usual. Uh, we had quizzes in ELA and mathematics as well as in creative writing. And we are going to give you now basically the rundown of your performances and talk a little bit about the areas that gave our students difficulty, all right, or that were difficult for them to do. And, you know, perhaps that would guide your real revision at home you know, and guide you as parents, you know, to help your children or help your wards to focus on those problematic areas. And of course, we're going to highlight those students who did particularly well in our assignments. All right. So here's our uh, weekly class by class report. So we are now up to 729 student members and we have about one fifth of the class, you know, with their parents actively tracking their progress. So, um, you know, the announcement came on Thursday that there would be no, no school. Um, well, sorry, it came on Friday that there would be no school this week. And usually we have a late surge on Friday before the midnight deadline with our submissions. So we usually get over 100 for both, sub for both subjects. But I'm sure a lot of the students' families, you know, they were preoccupied and so on. So we had 89 submissions in the English language arts, which was an exercise in poetry. And 94% of our students, they passed and they had an average score of 82%. Um, so our students so far, they've been able to handle the poetry exercises quite well. And they, have, they had done you know, a good job on those live call-in sessions with Ms. Nyla in English language arts. And we also had a quiz in mathematics that had to do with, you know, we wrapped up basically all of the section one uh, number type questions, all right? We're already in section two and three and the other strands, but number has the most amount of questions throughout the paper. 
So we still had a little bit of section one number to complete. We wrapped that up and we also started to look at measurement section two questions uh, with a focus on time, right? And you know, our students, they didn't do as great as some of the other topics. And again, this is not um, something that should make us, you know, discouraged. This should just tell us where we need to focus um, some of our attention. And of course, when they did uh, those assignments or those quizzes on our Edmodo page, they would have gotten the correct answers after they completed the test and reviewed the quiz results. Okay, so it's not like we just give you a score and you're left there in the dark. You have the right answers. The questions are in front of you and you can, you know, rework them and approach them differently. Hopefully you'll get the right answer. And of course, we tackle similar questions on the program to those that are given on the quizzes. So you can refer to our videos. And how, how can you find our videos again? You know, we have all of our videos on our Facebook page, see results under the videos tab. There's even a nice playlist there with just entitled C results as well with all of the full episodes, all right, dating all the way back to late November when we began. And another way to access our videos is on our YouTube channel, C results, all right? So you just go into YouTube and you search C results or you just youtube.com forward slash C results and you are going to find all of our videos nicely titled and with descriptions, you know, about all the content covered in the videos and you know, all of our live questions, you can also do them, all right? You can pause the videos before we begin um, to answer the questions or take the student calls and you can work it out and listen to the response afterwards. And of course, if you wanna get involved with our weekly classes and our weekly assignments, which are given on a Saturday and due on the following Friday, uh, based on the week's content that we do, you visit edmodo.com or you download the Edmodo app on your Apple, iOS, or Windows devices, and you use this code that you're seeing on the screen right now, 6KJQ3Y, and you can join our class. Everything is free, by the way, our, our app, our pages, our YouTube channel, everything for the benefit of our nation's youth and in helping them to prepare for this exam. And now in a time where we don't have, you know, formal school going on, I'm sure many parents, many families will appreciate it even more to be a part of this journey with us, all right? So let's look at some of those students who did particularly well. Um, we have Ishan Gangaram who got full marks in the poetry assignment as well as in the math assignment, as well as Rocco Gunmetal. And I have a feeling that this is an alias here. You know, we don't have many students with aliases on the website, but we have one or two. Jaden Rosales, this is a new student here on our top, top achieving list, all right? It might be a new student in general on the Edmodo class. And you know, we sometimes have those people that just burst onto the scene and do incredibly well as this student, Caitlin Sunarain has. You know, she joined us a few months after the program began and has been performing at a very high level, all right? As is Ishan Yangaram. So, we also have those students that missed out by just uh, getting one question wrong in either the maths or the ELA. We have several students who did, you know, who achieved that. Aditya, Dakare, Haley, Miriam, Dominique, Shania, Jacob, Faye, Shane, Micah, Sydney, and Javen, all um, just coming so, ever so close to getting full marks in both of those quizzes. And we have, I know, our creative writers. Uh, we have Caitlin. Rishon, Tian, Dominique, Shania, and Jonathan, who all did very, very well in their creative writing. And this week, they had to submit the conclusion to our ongoing story, the narrative story about that fire alarm going off in the grocery setting, all right? So the scenario was there. And over the um, last few weeks, they combined all of these skills, all of the tools that we taught previously in our creative writing sessions and they had to write a complete story, you know, bit by bit, and we marked every paragraph. And of course, you can look forward to this Tuesday, that is tomorrow, from 6 p.m. when we begin our creative writing session for tomorrow. About halfway through, a little after halfway through that session, we will be reading some full essays, all right? We'll do that on Tuesday as well as Thursday, and we are gonna, you know, use the rubric and so on and show you just how well these students did 
and where there are room or where there is room for improvement. All right, so of course, with all of that information given, we are ready now to begin our work for today. And we're gonna share with you the numbers for the studio. You know, we are, we are past the point now, um, well, with SCA having supposed to be so close to, to, to today um, of really teaching, you know, if you wanna get all of our content that we did, you know, in terms of actual lessons from, you know, from the beginning of a topic, giving you examples and so on, feel free to visit our YouTube channel. We have over um, 40 episodes, each of them two hours long on YouTube, and you'll find many complete lessons there. All right, so for these uh, remaining sessions, as we, headed, as we moved into that period of the SCA exam itself, it's all about practice, all right? If we do find something new to teach, we will do it as we encounter it. So our first question for today, and again, we're back in statistics, right? This is the section three type statistical questions, which is the last question on the SCA paper, question number 45. All right, we're dealing with those types of questions today. We just got one done last week, Thursday, after we completed our previous set of um, lessons, all right? So here's our first question. The incomplete bar graph below shows the number of students who wear glasses in standard five at the C results primary school. Class B has one and a half times the number of students wearing glasses as class A. We have to draw the missing bar for class B, all right? So let's get a zoom in there on this bar graph and I'm gonna take a caller to assist me with this problem. Good afternoon, caller. Welcome to C results on IBN TV. Hello. Hi, and who am I speaking with? Hello. Yes, hello, good day. Hello, sir. Hi, who am I speaking with today? Hello. Are you here, Nicola? Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Kola. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. All right, so what is your name? Javan. All right, Javan. So, Javan. What are your thoughts for this question here? We have to figure out, or to draw, sorry, the bar for class standard 5B. What are, you, what are your ideas here? So my idea is to change one and a half to an improper fraction. Uh -huh. So you would say one multiply by two to give you two, and then you add one, and, you'll, and that will give you three over two. Uh -huh. And then 3 over 2 multiplied by 10 okay. to give you 15. Alright, just a moment. And, and, and you have to draw 15 at the standard 5B class. Alright, so you got 15. Hello? Yes, I'm listening. You got... 15 students, and we have to draw the bar up to 15 yes, on sir. that slide, right? Yes, sir. All right, great. Thank you. So, do you want to help me with the second part of the question? Okay, sir. All right, so we are told that the three classes have 30 students each. Calculate the percentage of students in standard five who don't wear glasses. Okay, so first I would say 30 multiplied by 3. Uh, uh, yes. To give you 90. Okay. You can please go back to the bar graph. All right, so we have 30 multiplied by 3, which is 90 students in total, right? Yes, sir. All right. So I'm just going to remind you that we had 10 students in class A. We had 15 in class B, as you just worked out for us. Yes. And we had five mm -hmm. in class C, right? Yes, sir. So how many students do we have that do wear glasses? So those numbers that they call out, they wear glasses or they do not wear glasses? They do wear glasses. Oh, so I would say 10 add 15. Yeah. Add, add five to give you 30. All right. And the question said, how many students do not wear glasses, right? Correct, yes. How many students do not wear glasses? 
So I would say 90 take away 30 mm -hmm. to give me 60. Right. And to give me 60, and then I would say 60 over 90. Yeah. Multiplied by 100. Excellent. And, and when I cancel, I would get, you could cut out the zero, please. Sure. So I would get 66 and two thirds percent. All right, 66 and two thirds, two -thirds percent. percent. All right. Yes, sir. All right, excellent. So that is, in fact, the answer to this problem. Thank you so much, Javan, for your help. All right, so another point to note, uh, viewers, is that we have to be aware of certain fractions and their percentage equivalents, all right? So we know, for instance, that a quarter is 25%. We know that a half is 50%. We know that three quarters is 75%. All right, and we, it's also useful to know or to remember the thirds and the eighths and so on, and we've encountered many of those um, throughout the duration of our program so far. And Right, we know that one third is 33 and a third percent, right? This is a useful one to learn off. And these are all, you know, common fractions and their percentage equivalents, all right? Common fractions and their percentage equivalents. It will save you time in working it out, all right? And we just calculated that um, 30 of the students do wear glasses in a class of 90 because each class has 30 students. So, therefore, as Javan rightly said, we subtracted that 30 and we got 60 over 90 because 90 is the total size of the classroom. And if we were to reduce this fraction to its lowest terms, you know, we'd get 2 over 3, which is 2 thirds, and that we should learn is 66 and two thirds, all right, percent, all right, or 66.67 in decimal form or 667, all right, we need to know this, it is just two times a third, and a third, as we said, is 33 and a third percent. So thank you so much for your help with that question there, Javen. That is absolutely correct, and now we have another question, and of course we're gonna ask you for your help for this question. So let's read it. Each of the five students below have a weekly allowance of $100. Calculate the amount of allowance not saved for each of them, right? And then we have to calculate the average allowance not saved. So we have here, you know, a table on our screen. We have five students, we have the allowance that they saved, and we have to determine the amount of allowance not saved for each of them. And we are told that each of the five students below have a weekly allowance of $100. All right, each of them have a weekly allowance of $100. So do we have any callers willing to assist us in calculating the amount not saved? Good afternoon, caller. Welcome to see results. Good afternoon, caller. Welcome to see results. Hi. Hi, good day, and who am I speaking with? Hi. Hi, good day, and who am I speaking with? Um, I'm a first-time caller called the side room. Welcome to our program. So can I just ask you to uh, mute the volume on the television and listen to me on the phone, please? Oi. Oh, yes, yeah, sorry. No problem. Oh, yes, yeah, sorry. No problem. All right, so once you've done that, let's start working on this problem, right? Okay. Okay, great. So we have um, the allowance saved for each, and each of them have the same allowance of $100. So how would we determine the allowance not saved for each of those students? How I would do it in classes. I would take, I would put $100, take away $80 for Joshua. Yeah. 
And how and much is I'll that? I'll get twenty dollars. Very good. What about the other students? Then Tiana, same same process. Right. And I'll get sixty dollars. Very good. Brianna will get fifty dollars. Right. Jordan would get eighty dollars. And Shane would get thirty dollars. All right. And this is the allowance that they did not save, remember, right? Yes. All right. Thirty dollars. So that's the first part of our question is to determine the allowance not saved for each of them, right? So that's very good. We've already achieved that. But yeah. now we have to calculate the average allowance not saved. And how would we do that? What I would do is I'll add up all the sum, the sum of money. Yeah. What and sum? follow what, the formula for would we add? mean or amount, the allowance not saved. Right. And then I will divide it by how many people there are. Okay. So take a moment and add that up for me, please. Okay. $240. $240? Yeah. All right. Yeah, that's correct. And how many students do we have in total? Or how many, yeah, students five. do we have? Five. Five, right? So that would be $240 divided by five. All right. So we have $240 divided by five, which is how much? For the 24, mm -hmm. 5 by 4, which is 20, bring down the zero, then say 5 into 40, which is 8. All right. So what is the average save then? Or the, the average, average not save? The average save is $48. Right. So I stand corrected there, right? That's the average not saved, which is $48. Per student, right? Correct? Yeah. All right. So, excellent. So, thank you so much for your help and for being a first-time caller. You did a very good job with us there today. Appreciate that. All right. So, again, we had here the problem. Just to recap, you know, we are into the latter parts of the paper now, and we're going to make sure that everyone who's viewing understands what we have done, right? So we have each of these five students having an allowance of $100, and we need to calculate the amount not saved, all right? So here we have the allowance saved, and we are to determine the allowance not saved, and it's a simple subtraction problem, right? Each of them saves 100, or, right? Well, each of them are given 100 in allowance. If they saved 80, therefore it implies that they did not save 100, subtract 80, which is 20, that's for Joshua, and we did that same process for the five students, and then we had to determine their average not saved, all right? And of course, we do have, you know, complete videos explaining um, averages, both the arithmetic mean as well as the mode. You can look for those on our YouTube channel. Um, you know, the, type, the, the description and the title would um, direct you to that, all right? And we sum those because the averages we are dealing with a sum over a count, all right? Remember, that's the basic formula for the arithmetic mean, or otherwise known as the average. And we have to take the 240 and divide it by eight. And that gave us, uh, not, not by eight, sorry, by five. We have five students here in this problem, and we did that division, and we got $48 on average, not saved by each of those students. So we have a follow-up part of the question here. All right, the five students would like to pool their savings in order to watch a movie together at a cinema. If a movie ticket costs $60,
can the five of them afford to do so? All right? So I'm taking another caller to help me with this part of the problem. Good afternoon, caller. Welcome to See Results on IBN TV. Hi. Hi, good day. And who am I speaking with? Safira Bash. Hey, welcome, welcome. A very regular caller. We had a first-time caller. This is a regular caller here with us. So how would we approach this question, Zafira? I will approach this question. Um, they said five students want to pool their savings to, buy, to go to a cinema. Yeah. And it's $60 for one ticket. Yes. And it's five children. Mm-hmm. So I would say 60 multiplied by 5. Right. Which is 300. Very good. And then they said, if a movie ticket costs 60 dollars, can the five of them afford to do so? So then you said how much they save altogether. You add up how much they saved altogether. Right. And are you seeing that on your screen right now? Yeah. Okay, so work out for me how much they saved altogether. 260. 260. Excellent. So therefore, would they be able to afford to go to this movie, all of them? Yeah. Are you sure? Uh, no. All right. How much money will it cost all of them to go? You already worked that out. It will cost 260. The first calculation you did here, right? It costs $60 to go to the movie. And there are five of them. So you work that out and you got 300, right? Yeah. So they need to have $300. But they actually saved $260. So is that enough for them to go to the movies? No. Right. So how much are they shorting by? Just, just as a follow-up question. Although it's not part of our question. Um, they short by $40. Exactly. Hello. Right. So our question here. After showing this working, our answer, sorry, would be that no, they would not be able to attend the movie together, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Zafira. You're welcome. All right. So that was our regular caller there. All right. So just to recap, this is the part B to our question. We already dealt with the allowance not saved. All right. And there's a shortcut, actually, to get this 260, which is probably how she got it so quickly. Um, instead of adding up all of these values to get to that 260, we know that each of them were, uh, were given an allowance of $100, all right? So that's $500 in total between the five of them. We already calculated how much they did not save. So you could simply have also um, just took, taken 500 and subtracted the 240 that they didn't save, and you'd end up with that same 260 figure um, that Zafira worked out, all right? But then this here is the amount that they actually need for the five of them to go to the movies. So they need to have at least $300, you know? They could have more, but it must be at least 300, but they did not meet that minimum, okay? As it is there, only five of them could go. So only four of them could go, sorry. So that is... Um, the answer for that question. Thank you so much, Zafira. And we'll move on to yet another. So we have here another bar graph type question. And the question says, the incomplete bar graph below shows the number of tourists visiting the Pitch Lake for a given week. If Wednesday had half the number of visitors as Friday, draw the missing bar. All right, and we have to calculate the average number of tourists visiting the Pitch Lake for the week. We'll hold off on that part for now. Let's look at the bar graph and determine the number that um, visited on Wednesday. So good afternoon, caller. Welcome to see results on IBN TV. For a given week. If Wednesday had half the number of visitors on Friday, draw the missing right. Good afternoon, caller. All right, so callers, please do remember, um, as you're listening at home and you want to call and, you know, participate with us, that you need to lower the volume on your television, preferably mute it, and listen to us on the phone so we won't get that feedback, and you'll hear us um, on the phone as well. And 
you can always rewatch the video after the live has ended if you really want to hear how you sounded all right and that is fine no problem with that and you'll also be on youtube in a matter of days so I have another caller on the line. Good afternoon, caller. Welcome to Series Results on IBN TV. Hi, good evening. Hi, good evening. And who am I speaking with? Jacob. Welcome, Jacob. So, Jacob, what are your thoughts here? Okay. So, firstly, I would find for the visitors on Friday. And um, as the question says, it is half as much as Friday. Right. And Friday is equal to 60. Very good. So you so, got that so, by reading off the numbers on the left-hand side here, right? Yes. Great. So to find um, how much for, an, for Wednesday, it would be half of 60. Yes. Which is 30. All right. So 60 divided by 2 is 30. So where yeah, would that four. bar graph need to, where would the bar in this bar graph need to go up to? 30. Very on good. On Wednesday. And what is, what is something that we've learned about drawing the bars on a bar graph? Um, need to be precise. Right, so yes, you need to make sure that it's there um, on the 30 line. And also, um, if you refer to our previous videos, when we first learned about statistics, now you will have a ruler and, and a sheet of paper in front of you. You're yeah. going to try to make the width of those bars the same as the others, right? The one that yeah. you are including. Yeah. and try to make sure that the spacing between the bars remains the same, right? Yeah. That is actually a feature of a bar graph. Same width apart, and the bars should be of the same width, all right? Yeah. So that's correct. And this is very easy, so I'm going to let you stay on with us and work out the next part, which might be a bit more challenging, right? We need to calculate the average number of tourists visiting the Pitch Lake for the week. How would we do that? You would find me some. Okay, so help me find the sum. So if you add all the 50, 20, 30, 40, and 60, you'll get 200. All right, let's double check. Yes, that is 200. So what do we do next? Um, so find the average you divided by the amount of days. And how many so days are you looking at? So 200 is the sum, of the formula says, Sum divided by amount. Yeah. So it will be 200 divided by 5, since it has 5 days. All right. And what, what would that average be? 40. Excellent. So we had 40 tourists visiting on average for that week, right? Per day. Yeah. Thank you so much, Jacob. That's absolutely correct. Thank you so much for your help. So this, again, the sum over the count, which is our general formula for the average or the arithmetic mean. And as uh, Jacob just did, so skillfully, right, we have Friday having um, 60 visitors, half of those visited on Wednesday, right, or half that amount. So we divided the 60 by 2 and we got our 30. And now when finding the average, we have to find the, the sum for the week. So we're going to read off those values here for each of those bars, including the one we've drawn, all right? And we get a total of um, 200, and then we divide 200 by 5, which gave us an average of 40 tourists for the week or per day for that week. All right, so well done, Jacob. Now we have a second part of the question. 60% of the tourists who visited the Pitch Lake that week also visited a museum. A ticket to the museum costs $15. Calculate the total amount of money collected from the tourists by the museum. All right. So I have a caller on the line. Good afternoon, caller. Welcome to see results. Hi. 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 Good afternoon. And who am I speaking with? Janaya. Welcome, Janaya. So, Janaya, what are your thoughts for this question? Um, it's a very good question. All right. So 60% of the tourists who visited the Pitch Lake that week also visited a museum. How many yeah. tourists visited the Pitch Lake that week, Janaya? What is it? How many tourists visited the Pitch Lake for the week in question? Were you following along with us just now? 200. 
Right, 20, excellent. 200, yeah. yeah? So, yeah. we are told that 60% of that number, of, or, or those tourists, they also visited a museum, right? Yeah. So, how would we determine how many visited the museum? You find 60% of 200, or you could just find, yeah, 60% of 200. All right. And what would that give us? That will give you... 120. Excellent. So, 120 20. tourists okay. visited the museum. And we yeah. want to know how much money the museum made, basically, or how much they collected from the tourists. So, so you multiply 120 by 50. Right. So, I'll give you a moment to work that out. Um. One thousand eight hundred. Yeah. Right, and you are absolutely correct. Thank you. So you're welcome, and thank you so much for that call, Janaya. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. So we are just about a little bit past the halfway point there. I'm going to take a short break for two minutes, and we'll be back. With more questions, again, we are dealing with statistics in the Section 3 of the SEA paper. So don't go anywhere. This is the final question that you'll get on the SEA paper. But we are not doing it sequentially right now. We have more to come, all right? But today, I suppose we'll probably spend all of our time on this particular topic. I'll be back in a couple of minutes. Sheikli Show Limited, the Caribbean's largest manufacturers of plain and printed paper bags, leaders in plastic bags, vermicelli, split piece powder, and greaseproof paper, ideal for doubles, french fries, and sandwiches. Supplying stores nationwide. For quality products, trust Sheikli Show Limited, 665-3336. For the everyday lowest prices on all grocery items, trust low-cost supermarket. For the widest variety of quality products at low prices. Freshly picked fruits and vegetables, healthy products for your well-being, high-quality meat cuts, and a warm and friendly service. Low-cost supermarket, Sun and Main Road, Kunupia. Assalamu uh, <clears throat> alaikum, good afternoon, and welcome back to See Results on IBN TV. Um, I am Sir Ijaz, and we are dealing with mathematics currently, and we'll be joined at 6 p.m. by Ms. Naila for English Language Arts, all right? So don't go anywhere. We are currently dealing with uh, statistics questions in Section 3 of the paper, the SEA paper, and that is always question number 45. All right, so we have a couple more of those to do today. And then we'll be joined by Ms. Nyla at 6 p.m. And she's going to be tackling comprehension today, all right? And again, if you are now joining us, we know today we'll have a lot of first-time viewers as your home. You know, uh, school has been basically postponed for the rest of this term. 
all right? You can, do, you can view all of our previous episodes on our Facebook page under the videos tab, all right? And you can also find all of our videos that we've done previously on our YouTube channel, which is see results. You can subscribe to us there. We have so much content there already that, you know, you can utilize one video per day while you're off from school and there's a lot of learning there to be done, all right? And of course, we are live every Monday, Tuesday and Thursday from 5 to 7 p.m. And you can also join our Edmodo page, all right? You visit edmodo.com or you download the Edmodo app and you use this code to log in as a student, all right? Parents also have the option to join, um, but they can only monitor. They, they can't actually do any of the assignments, all right? But again, we like to advise that you just create the student account, uh, unless you really, really need to create the parent account. And for the reason that we'd like you to, you know, let the students, let your children use your devices or a device that you are monitoring so that when they open our quizzes, you know, they are supervised and they do the assignments. They are usually not um, very long, 15 to 20 minutes, all right? But what happens sometimes is that if you just allow them to do it, you know, on their own, unsupervised, it's timed like a real examination. So once this, you, be, you click begin and the time elapses, you get a zero unless you've done some part of the exam, you'll only be marked out of what you've done, all right? So it's really um, good in your interest to just monitor them that way, especially when they are doing the quizzes. So here now we are on to another question and we're gonna be taking your calls again to assist us with these, all right? So you have some fun while you learn with us. So the number of cups produced per hour at two factories, A and B, is shown below. All right, we have factory A, we have factory B, we have uh, machines A, B, C, D, we have the same at factory B, all right? And we have the number of cups produced, all right? So by finding the average number of cups produced at each factory, we have to determine which factory has more underperforming machines, all right? So that might confuse a bit of you, but once we are working the problem out, we'll make everything clearer, right? The first thing we have to do is to find the average number of cups produced by each factory. So I'm gonna take a caller now. Good afternoon, caller. Welcome to see results. Hello, sir. Hi, good day, and who am I speaking with? Javen. All right, welcome back, Javen. So Javen, how would we find the average number of cups produced at factory A? Okay, you can zoom in on the question, please. All right. Okay, you can zoom in on the question. So I would say 80 add 20 add 80 yeah. add 40 to give you 80 to give you 220. Right, excellent. And then to find the average amount of cups each machine should make, I would say 220 divided by 4 mm -hmm. to right. give you 55 cups. Right. Yeah. And what about factory B? Factory B, I would say 60 add 70 add 30 add 60 to give you 210 again. 210? I mean 220, so sorry. Right, no problem. And I will divide that by 4 to give me the same 55. Right. And since they said mm -hmm. underperforming, that means anything less than 55 would be an underperforming machine. Very so fact, hello, yes yeah. sir. Mm -hmm. So I would say 20. So so in factory A, the underperforming machines would be machine B and machine D, which right. is two machines. Yes. And so factory B, it would just be machine C. So factory A has more underperforming machines than factory B. Excellent, excellent. That is absolutely yes, right. Thank you so much for your call. All right, so factory A has more underperforming machines. So again, uh, this might be a little tricky to, to, to some of our viewers, all right? We do have standard four and five viewers here, all right? And of course, 
we're gonna we have to understand here that at the root of this question is to decipher what we mean by underperforming, all right? So each of these factories produces um, cups, all right? Uh, we have factory A and B, and both of them have four machines running. And these are the outputs here, the number of cups that are produced per hour. And in finding the average, as we've done for several of the questions so far, we've learned that we have to add the number of cups produced, in other words, get our sum, and divided by the count. And in this case, in both cases, we have four machines. And it just so happens that the total in factory A and factory B, it's both 220, and they both have four machines. So we get the same average of 55. So for the purposes of this question, right, we're gonna assume that underperforming here means that they are producing less than average, all right? Um, of course, that is not a given, but in this scenario, you know, we can assume that the underperforming machines are those that are performing below the average here, right? And not some stipulated number that is meant to be, you know, the benchmark for performance. If that were the case, it probably would have been given or it would have been given in the question. All right, so our average, and it did guide us by the way, by saying by finding the average, okay? So we don't have to um, worry too much about what we mean by underperforming here. So we divided those by four and we got an average of 55 for both factories A and B. And now we simply have to look at the machine's performance for each. So we had two machines, as our caller said, uh, machines B and D in factory A. They both produced less than the average all right, so here we had 20, and in D we had 40 being produced. Both of those are below the average of 55. And for factory B, we only have one, which is the machine C that is producing 30. And our question was to determine which factory had more underperforming machines. So we have two underperforming machines at factory A and only one at B. So therefore, um, factory A had more underperforming machines. All right, so we have a part B. At factory B, a mean production of 60 cups per hour is expected. How many more cups per hour must be produced in, our, in order to achieve this? All right, I have a caller on the line. Good afternoon, caller. Welcome to see results on IBM TV. Hi. Hi, good day, and who am I speaking with? Aaron. Hey, welcome to the program. So what are your thoughts here? We require a mean production of 60 cups per hour at factory B. We want to know how many more cups must be produced in order to achieve this, right? Yes. So how many cups are currently being produced on average? Um, um, 55. 55. So how do you think we're going to get this up to an average of 60 cups per hour? Um, you have to um, multiply the... 60 by, by 4, because it's 4 machines, Okay. you'll get 240. All right. That is the total. So, and then the total, for the, av the total for the average of 55 will be 220. Right. So, in order to find how many cups, you'll need to subtract 220 from 240, and you'll get 20. All right. So we subtracted the 220, which is what we used to get that 55 average, right? Yeah. That is what's currently being produced. And the expected is 240. Because we have 60 cups on average, we have four machines. So we multiply 60 by four to get the total, right? Yeah. All right, and when we subtracted those, we're gonna get 20. 20 more cups. So we need to have 20 more cups produced per hour to get that average of 60 per hour. Very good. Well done, caller. That's absolutely right. So let's just break it down again for our viewers out there who, you know, are not as exposed or maybe a little bit rusty on this topic. Um, we have 220 uh, cups being produced in this hour here, or per hour actually, at the factory B, all right? And that gave us an average of 55. All right, our sum of 220 divided by the count of four gave us 55 cups per hour 
being produced on average. Now we want to get to an average of 60. Okay, so what should our, should our total be in order to achieve that? Again, we know that our sum divided by our count gives us our average, right? So we don't have the sum yet. We know that a sum divided by 4 has to give us 60. So therefore, we do the opposite operation of divide, which is to multiply. So our sum is equal to 60 multiplied by 4, which is 240. And the actual sum as it is right now is 220. So we simply have to subtract 240, <coughs> subtract 220 from 240, and we get the 20 more cups needed to be produced. Another way to look at it, we could take the actual, sorry, the expected mean of 60 and subtract the actual mean of 55, and we get 5 is the difference in mean. And because we have four machines, if we multiply that by the number of machines, we're going to get 20 cups per hour. So that's an alternative way to get to our answer of 20 more cups. All right, so thank you so much, Aidan. OK, so we have another question. And let's take a read of this question before we answer any calls. A survey of 100 people was done to find out their favorite places visited during the August vacation. The chart shows some of the information gathered. Right, so we have the beach, the mall, the zoo, the museum, and the park. And we only have the information for the beach, museum, and the park, right? 22 um, favorite place to visit is the beach, 5 the museum, and 13 the park. We are told that 10 more people visited the mall than the zoo. Calculate the number of people who visited the mall and the zoo. So let's take a caller. Good afternoon, caller. Welcome to see results. Hello, good day. Hi, good day. And who am I speaking with? John Thomas. Hey, welcome to the program. So what are your thoughts Hi. here for this question? What did you say? What are your thoughts for this question? Um... What information do we have right now? What do we know? How many people were surveyed here in this chat or in order um, to get to this chat? In total, it has 100 people. Right. And the, the, the number that they give you um, is 22 add 5 add 13. Yes. That you will get is Still 43, I mean 40. 40. 40, right, very good. So these three together give us 40, right? Yes. So how many people are unaccounted for right now? 60 people. 60, excellent. 100, we subtract that 40 and we get 60 people, right? Yes. But we, we are told that 10 more people visited the mall than the zoo. So we have to calculate now how many, how many visited the mall and how many visited the zoo. Do you have any thoughts there? Yes. So you, firstly, you divide by 2. What are we dividing by 2? You divide 60 by 2. Okay. Uh, carry on. Let's see where you're going. Wait, no, sorry. You divide, you divide 60 by 3. All right, so we have to divide something by 2. But okay. it isn't 60. You want me to tell you why? Because we have 10 more people visiting um, the mall than the zoo. All right, so it's not equally shared between the mall and the zoo. So we have 60 people going to the mall and to the zoo. Agreed? Yes. And we are told that 10 more people go to the mall than to the zoo. So what if we subtract 
the people who, oh. the extra 10 people that went to the mall, what would we be left with? 50 people. 50, right? So we got rid of those excess people from the mall and let's divide now. By two. That's 50 by 2. What will that give us? 50 by 2, we will get 25. Right, so we divide 50 by 2 and we get 25. And, and now 25 people went to the zoo and 25 plus 10 people went to the mall. mall. Because 10 more people went to the mall. So how many people went to the mall in, the, in that case? 35. 35. And we have 25. And how much does 35 and 25 add up to? It adds up to 60 people. The 60 people, right? And that was the missing number of people on our table, yes? Yes. All right. Thank you so much for sticking it through. Don't worry that you didn't get it at the first try. I know when you see a question like this now, you'll have the, the best idea of how to approach it, right? Yes, sir. All right, excellent. So thank you so much for your call. All right, guys. So just to recap here, a lot going on in this question. We have 100 people surveyed, and they're telling us or telling the surveyor their favorite places visited during their August holiday. And we have five such places here on the table. We are given information for, two of, for three of the five, which is the beach, the museum, and the park. So we add those up. We subtract it from the total people that were surveyed, right? So we have 40 from 100, which gives us 60 people to split between the mall and the zoo. We can't simply divide that by two. Why not? I mean, if they said that the, the same number of people attended the mall or preferred the mall and the zoo, would have been a done case there of just dividing, right? But we are told that 10 more people visited the mall than the zoo. So what we have to do is to eliminate those 10 more, right? So now we'll have an equal number, all right? We have an equal number of people to divide between the mall and the zoo, which is 50, and we divide that by two, we get 25. So the 25 there, that is your answer for the zoo, and the mall would be we have to add back those 10 people that we took away in the first instance, and that's how we end up with 35 people attending the mall and 25 people attending the zoo, okay? So um, that's our answer for that question. We do have a second part, but we, are, we don't have enough time to go through this entire question. So we're going to leave that for Thursday when we continue with mathematics, um, Thursday at 5 p.m. And of course, tomorrow on Tuesday, we have English language arts and creative writing. All right, that's from 5 to 6 and 6 to 7 with Miss Nyla. And I will also be featured there during the latter part of the creative writing session. We'll be reading some complete essays from our students, all right, who have been working on their narrative pieces for the past several weeks. And again, if you want to get in on this entire thing, um, you visit us at edmodo.com or you download the Edmodo app for Apple, for Android, as well as Windows. And you use the code there shown on the screen um, and you enter, you, you subscribe or you log in as a student. And there are quizzes right now that are available for you to do that are due on Friday at 11.59 p.m. Those quizzes are based on the content that we covered last week, all of the videos, you can find them on Facebook under the videos tab, as well as on our YouTube channel, see results. So you can have a look at those videos before you attempt the, the questions, all right? You have enough time, I'm here at home right now, so you can look at those three videos from last week, right? You can split it up over the course of the week, you know, when you don't have the live program going on, and you have until Friday at 11.59 p.m. to submit those quizzes, right? We have a math quiz and English language quiz as well as a creative writing piece. And this one is a report writing or expository writing piece. All right, so you get some practice there. And um, that's it for me for today. In about two minutes, you'll be joined by Miss Nyla with English language arts. We're tackling comprehension today, so don't go anywhere. Um, we'll be right back. Thank you so much for viewing and for calling and participating. I have been Sir Ijaz. Good evening. Assalamu alaikum.
Sheekly Show Limited, the Caribbean's largest manufacturers of plain and printed paper bags, leaders in plastic bags, vermicelli, split piece powder, and greaseproof paper, ideal for doubles, french fries, and sandwiches. Supplying stores nationwide. For quality products, trust Sheekly Show Limited, 665-3336. For the everyday lowest prices on all grocery items, trust Low Cost Supermarket for the widest variety of quality products at low prices. Freshly picked fruits and vegetables, healthy products for your well-being, high quality meat cuts, and a warm and friendly service. Low Cost Supermarket, Southern Main Road, Canopia. Assalamu alaikum, good evening guys and welcome to C Results. I'm Miss Naila and you are joining me now for ELE. So we are starting with comprehension. But before I do so, I want to say welcome to all our viewers, you know, whether you are watching us live on our stream on Facebook, so the C Results page or IBN TV 8 page, or right here on live with us on channel 8. Right guys, so I hope that you're having a good day. Um, we had some news earlier today. Um, telling us about, you know, school will be closed until next term, right? Um, we know that the SA exam is just around the corner, providing that it is not postponed. But until then, we have our duty to work together and get ready um, in order, you know, to perform our best in that exam. And that is exactly what we are going to do. We are going to keep in track with that, right, guys? So, as you know, for the ELA paper, um, it comprises of two sections. So, in section one, we, ha we looked at... Um, several tasks. So we had the spelling, um, punctuation, so spelling, grammar, and punctuation, and um, capitalization. So that was your section one in ELA paper. In the section two, we have poetry, comprehension, and graphic. Now we already completed the graphic so far, and we looked at poetry briefly. Now we did look at a couple of poems, probably about four or five, right? Um, you know, we were again at April 2nd, so we're trying to squeeze in you know, give you as much practice as you can in all the areas necessary for the ELA. And we are finally on to the last task in section two paper here, which we are currently, well, we are going to start actually looking at comprehension, right? Now, in comprehension, it's similar to poetry and graphic in that you have to answer these questions. And some questions are literal and some are inferential, meaning that the answers may or may not lie in the passage. It's up to you you know, to figure out the answer. So I'm going to share some, you know, um, comprehension skills, strategies with you, you know, uh, in case you're one of those students who struggle with comprehension, right? Um, now, you should not feel um, any way about that. Rather, take this as an opportunity, a learning opportunity to enhance your comprehension skills, right? Um, comprehension can be very tricky, so it's really important that you master your skills, you read your questions properly, you look at the little tips that we share with you, Right? And of course, follow along with us in the program where we read our comprehension passage and answer questions. Right? So, first of all, we, we know what comprehension is, right? but we're just going to share a reminder with you. So, comprehension is an act of constructing meaning with text whereby the reader is responsible for eliciting, organizing, interpreting, and making associations with the information given. Right? So, it's all up to the reader there for you to withdraw information from what the text has presented, right? So the comprehension skills here is what's really important. Your comprehension skills are strategies a reader uses to construct meaning and retrieve information from the text. So now this is how, right, the following are some ways I'm going to show you how to do so, right? Comprehension skills can be taught and applied to all reading situations, including, right, Sorry, let me just read that again. Comprehension skills that can be taught and applied to all reading situations include, so these are some of the things that, you know, you will always have to come across or reflect upon when you're doing comprehension. So summarizing, making sense of what you have just read, being able to um, give like a main idea of a paragraph or the entire passage. Because questions may come, well, what is the main idea of um, paragraph one? Or what is the main idea of the passage, right? So it's really up to you. Sequencing, of course, um, we know what sequences, sequencing is all about as we have been looking at sequencing and creative writing for some time as well. Inferring, right, making sense of the meaning, um, making sense of the text, right, and inferring meaning. 
comparing and contrasting, if necessary, in, your, in the text, drawing conclusions. Again, um, sometimes the answers may not directly be in the text, but you now have to infer and may or draw conclusions necessary, right? Or pertaining to that text. Self-questioning. Now, self-questioning is similar to these here, where you know you have to ask yourself, you know, um, well, what does it mean or what are they trying to say here, right? Because like I said, questions may be inferential and some may be literal, right? Problem solving is distinguishing between fact and opinion. Now, this point here um, brings me to our comprehension passages itself. The comprehension passages, um, sometimes, you know, they either come fact or some comes fiction. So it's really um, up to SEA uh, what they set on that paper, right? So you may get a fact or you may get a fiction, but the idea is very similar in that you must know how to interpret the information given and how to answer the questions necessary. Finding the main idea, important facts, and supporting details, right? Which was just the idea, um, point that we were talking about in summarizing and being able to tell what the main idea or the purpose of the passages or anything relating to that point. Now, when you are doing a comprehension passage, much like the poetry and graphic where I told you, you know, there are two approaches that I often tell students that they can take. One, you can read the questions and then read the passage and then reread the questions, right? Or what you can do, read the passage and then read the questions and reread the passage. So it's really up to you if you want to read the questions first or the passage first. Either way, right? Um, either way, it works out. Um, the only advantage, I think, you know, with reading the um, questions and then the passage is that when you read the passage, you have an idea already, you know, of some of the, the um, points that you are looking for when answering questions. So you know to the back of your mind, well, this answer lies in paragraph one or two and so on. This advantage, however... You know, students tend to take that for granted because they know where the answer is. In example, paragraph three. Now they don't want to reread the part, the passage carefully. Now I can't stress how important reading and rereading your passage poem or graphic is. Right? Um, like I said, do not take any of the information given for granted. Everything is there for a reason. Right? So it's up to you. Uh, how you interpret that information. Of course, we want to do that to the best of our ability. Right, so that's basically, you know, a summary of what comprehension is about and some of the things that you have to do to enhance your comprehension skills. So now what we are going to jump directly into comprehension and today we are going to be starting with a non-fiction piece, right? So non-fiction meaning that this here is actually based on um, factual information, right? So this piece is entitled Wetlands. So you can read with me and then... Um, We'll go to the questions and look at the various questions. Wetlands are areas that are usually wet and have different types of plants. There are, there are many different kinds of wetlands and many ways to categorize them. Some common names for wetlands include marshes, estuaries, mangroves, mudflats, and swamps. At one time, people didn't understand the importance of wetlands in our ecosystem. They viewed them as smelly, insect, infested and disease-ridden place. As a result, people began to drain and destroy these wetlands to make way for farming, housing, and commercial buildings. It was then that environmental scientists began to work towards finding the value of wetlands. Their findings were brought to the attention of politicians. This resulted in many countries having strict laws to protect these wetlands. Through their study, scientists have made some very interesting findings. They have discovered that wetlands are critical to the environment and to mankind. One main function of the wetlands is that they naturally clean the water tables. With the use of microorganisms, it is possible to naturally clean the water supply much better than, than many water purification plants. A benefit of purifying water with the use of wetlands is that not only does it save the taxpayers money, but it also saves the environment from the pollution that a water purification plant would produce. Wetlands also function like nature's paper towels. In the event of a large storm or heavy rain, wetlands can soak up the flood waters. This prevents the land around them from flooding or being washed away completely. In addition, the trees and plants that grow in wetlands are like nature's cleaning crew. 
by absorbing some of the chemicals and pollution that wash into the area. Wetlands are also places of great natural beauty. They attract thousands of ecotourists annually. They also provide an opportunity for bird watching, fishing, photography, and filming. Finally, wetlands provide a feeding ground and a habitat for many fishes, waterfowls, and other wildlife. Many endangered birds nest and breed on these shores of wetlands, and these habitats are crucial for their survival. For these reasons, the destruction of wetlands has become a major problem all over the world. Okay, so that was the end of the nonfiction passage there. Now, as you can see, and I'm pretty sure many of you, you know, may need to reread this, right? Um, the information probably doesn't, you know, um, you know, fit right at first reading. You need to reread it, make sense of what they are saying. Some of this information may be new to you, right? So it's not that you have previous knowledge, so you will definitely need to reread it to get the gist or the main idea of what they are saying and why they are saying it. Right? We are not going to reread um, the passage, however, when we go to the questions, we are going to share um, the relevant parts of the passage for you or with you, right? so that you can uh, get the meanings from them in order to answer the questions. Right? So then we're going to open the lines. The numbers are going to be up on the screen shortly. Feel free to call us and help us answer some of these questions. Right? Um, as I just said, when you read the question, I'm just going to go to the relevant part um, of the passage. Now, it's a little um, difficult to have, you know, the five slides that I just had with the passage, have it over and over again, right? So hence the reason I'm going to be helping you a little bit, but I trust that, you know, um, you're going to make sense of what you are reading. And of course, that you did pay attention while we were reading shortly, right, a couple of minutes ago. So the lines are open, guys. Call us and help us answer these questions. Now, I don't want students to be afraid, right? Some of you might be shy. That's okay. We are here to learn, right? And this is a learning community, so feel free to participate. And we do have a caller to help us. Good evening and welcome to see results. Hello, good afternoon. Hi, you're welcome. What's your name? Janaya. Nice to have you with us. So this question here, what is the main idea of the passage? The main idea of this passage are some facts about the wetland. Okay, to give us facts about the wetland? Well, uh, can you repeat that for me? The main idea of the passage are facts about wetland. Okay, all right, no problem. We'll take that answer. Thank you so much for calling. Welcome. Right, right so once your, uh, your answer is similar to that, right, or the answer that we are going to share with you, and I just Right, so the one that we're going to share to you, your answer will be given um, correct, right? So the main idea of the passage is that wetlands are important features of our ecosystem and must be protected, right? So thanks so much for calling, right? So facts, Welcome. So, so facts about wetlands or anything pertaining to wetlands, right? Of course, it must sum up the um, passage nicely because they're asking for the main idea. Right, we have another caller to help us. Good evening and welcome to See Results. Hi, welcome. Good evening, welcome to see results. Hi, good afternoon. Hi, welcome. What's your name? Teresa. Nice to have you with us. So tell me, what caused environmental scientists to work towards finding the value of wetlands? Now, they began their work when people began to drain the wetlands for farming and, bu and building. Excellent job. And you remember that from just reading it the first time? Yes. Okay. Great memory. Thanks so much for calling. Right? So, You're welcome. So that answer is correct. They began their work when people began to drain the wetlands for farming, housing, and commercial buildings. Right? So if you had this as your answer, you were thinking about it, then you are correct. And you have another two marks in the bag there. So well done so far, guys. Right? Next question here. From paragraph three, state two functions of wetlands. Let's see if this caller can help us. Good evening and welcome to see results. Hi, good evening. Afternoon. Hi, welcome. What's your name? I'm, I'm Josiah Durham. I tuned in for the math section. Yes. Okay, so we, maths um, just concluded. So we just finished with maths um, just before six. 
And now we have ELA, so we are on to comprehension right now. Will you like to take part in our comprehension questions? Are, oh, you, there? are you there, Kola? Oh, hello? Hi, are you, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so will you like to answer this question? Yes. Okay, so from paragraph 3, state two functions yes, of wetlands. So this is paragraph 3 here. So I want you to give me two functions of wetlands. So I want you to give me two functions of wetlands. Two functions of wetlands are the nature of paper towel okay, in yes. the large in so in the event of a large storm or heavy rain wetland. Okay, so that's one. Because they said wetlands also function like nature's paper towels. And they gave you explanation how so. So that's one. What will be the other one there? This prevents the land around them from flooding or being washed away completely. Um, okay, well, that is still the nature's paper towels, but um, you can probably read it to the end and see if you can come up with another idea. Okay. In addition, in addition, the trees and plants that grow in wetlands are like nature's cleaning crew. Right, very good. Right, so that's another answer I wanted. It. Thanks so much for calling. Thank right. you. You're welcome. Right, um, just before I read this answer here, I just want to remind you guys when you are giving your answers, not only um, when you are calling us, but I'm sure when you're answering questions in class, when you're doing your practice papers, it's really important that you read the entire paragraph um, to get the answer because they specifically asked right, for that answer from paragraph three. Right? So you have to ensure that you have two different answers. Right, so one way to do that, of course, you read the paragraph properly, read the question so that you understand what they are asking, and then you reread or read your answer, right, to ensure that you are giving them exactly what they want from the question. So two functions of wetlands are the soak up flood waters. You can elaborate on that if you wish. They absorb chemicals and pollution. But I just want to point out to you here, to the bottom of the screen or to the bottom of your question, you usually see the marks. So either it's one, two, sometimes three. Now that is usually an indication of how much they want you to write. Because it's only two marks that is telling us that we do not need to write an entire paragraph. Right? With the comprehension style questions that we get in SEA, they're actually or either they are two marks, one mark, or three marks. Right? Probably they'll even go to four. I'm not sure about that one. Right? But I have seen one, two, and three. So that is your indication there telling you, well, okay, I just need to write two lines or three lines to tell me or to give me that full two marks. Of course, your answer must match your question. Yeah? So great job there. Right? Um, we have another question there. What is the meaning of the word crucial or is it on line 24 as used in the passage? Let's see if this caller can help us. Good evening and welcome to see results. Hi, good evening. Hi, good evening. Hi, caller. Welcome. What's your name? Alyssa. Nice to have you with us. So tell me, what is the meaning of the word crucial as used in the passage? And I highlighted it here for you. So you can go ahead. Crucial means important. Important, right? Okay, we'll take that answer. Yeah. Thanks for calling. Right, of Thank course. You. You're welcome. So of course, you probably had that previous knowledge, right? Some of you may know that, know the meaning of that that word or another word already from your vocabulary but if you don't what I tell you to do right um, you read in context of your uh, passage right or in this case your couple lines to get the meaning of the word crucial many endangered birds nest and breed on the shores of wetlands and these habitats are crucial for their survival so the fact that we are going to use this last part here for their survival that phrase helps us to understand the meaning of crucial because they said for their survival so it is very important right they have that without it they cannot survive right if it wasn't important then it wouldn't be necessary for their survival right so that's another way that you can infer the meaning there 
So I'm just going to share the meaning with you as I have it. The meaning of the word crucial is important or necessary. Either of those will be correct. Right? Um, I'm not going to go on to the next question as yet. Uh, we are close to Maghrib time. So we're just going to take a short break, break for Maghrib. Um, but don't go anywhere, guys. When we come back, we're going to continue with these questions. And yeah, we'll be right back in a couple of minutes.
Assalamu alaikum, good evening guys and welcome back to see results. If you're just joining me, I'm Miss Naila and we are currently on section two of the ELA paper and we are looking at comprehension skills. Now we just read the passage, it's actually a non-fiction passage entitled Wetlands and we just about the fourth question in, right? So you still have some time, you didn't miss much and of course we have more after this as well. Now we're going to continue with our call, so let's read this question and then we'll go to the call on the line. From the passage, state two reasons that wetlands are destroyed. All right, so we have a caller to help us. Good evening and welcome to see results. Hi, good evening, caller. Hi. Hi, welcome. What's your name? This is Aidan. Hi, Aidan. So tell me, from the passage, state two reasons that wetlands are destroyed. So you can read this um, paragraph if you like, and then you can give me the answer. Okay. I know you'll need a couple of minutes. They were destroyed. Yeah. Bec because people view them as smelly, insect infested, and disease ridden place. No. You want to try that again? Um, yes. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, they destroyed it to make, fa to make way for farming, housing, and commercial buildings. Right. That's the answer, right? Thanks for calling. You're welcome. Okay, great. Right, so. Uh, two reasons that wetlands um, were destroyed were for farming, housing, and well, I just put the three here. Now it's up to you, so whichever two you'd like to use, commercial buildings or homes. So any of those two would be correct, right? And as I said, right before the break, ensure that you read your passage carefully and your question carefully, right? You don't want to lose an easy two marks um, for not reading it properly. According to the passage, what are two ways that wetlands can help the economy? All right, so let's read that question again. According to the passage, what are two ways that wetlands can help the economy? All right, so I'm going to go to that part of the passage that helps us with that answer, and I'm going to take this call. Good evening, and welcome to see results. Hi, Carla, good evening. Good afternoon. Hi, welcome. What's your name? Azaria. Hi, Azaria. Did you see the question just now? Yes. Okay, so I'm just going to go back one second so you'll see it again. According to the passage, what are two ways that wetlands can help the economy? So go ahead. You can read it and then give me your answer if you like. They attract thousands of ecotourists annually. Right. A benefit of purifying water with the use of wetlands is that not only it saves taxpayers' money, but it also saves the environment. Excellent job. Right, thanks so much for calling and giving us your answer. Right, so two well, ways. Um, so uh, there are quite a number of ways here, right? But it purifies water, so a water purification plant does not have to be built, thus saving money, taxpayers' money, as the caller pointed out. And also it attracts um, eco-tourists, which brings in money as well, right? So any of those answers, once it gives us or tells us, you know, um, how it helps the economy, your answer will be correct. According to the passage, just give me one second. I want to go back to this real quick, right? This just came to mind. When we're talking about economy, right, um, you have to ensure that you understand what this word means, right? Um, if you don't understand what that word means in the question, Right, um, how will you answer the question? Right, so um, your key word that, oh, that may potentially help you here, uh, what are two ways that wetlands can help the economy? Um, so help here, probably being a key word, right? Economy, meaning, you know, revenue and money and all of those things, right? So you might, you know, I do encourage you, if you didn't know the meaning before, you know, take a dictionary, find it now. Who knows, maybe for SEU, you, you may get a paragraph, a passage rather, that has this word in it, right? And some of you may know, some of you may not know, right? Just to safeguard yourself or any word actually that you come across, you know, just to help you. All right, so let's go to this question. According to the passage, why did people destroy wetlands? All right, let's take this call. Good evening and welcome Hello? to see results. Hi, welcome. Hi, good afternoon. Good evening, welcome. What's your name? Clarissa. Hi, so nice to have you with us. 
So according to the passage, why did people destroy wetlands? They didn't understand the importance of wetlands in our ecosystem. Excellent job. Can I ask a question? Um, did you do this passage before? No. Okay, all right. Great job. Thanks for calling. Awesome. Right. Um, and that is precisely the answer that I wanted. I know some of you probably would have said um, because they wanted it or used it for farming, housing, and commercial buildings. But the, real, the answer that I really wanted here, right, was just, just that what the um, caller said. So excellent job. According to the passage, people destroyed wetlands as they did not know the importance of wetlands in our ecosystem. Right? So excellent job. You must, thank, you. thank you so much for calling. Right, another question. Some farmers want to destroy wetlands for farming. Do you support this move? Support your answer with an example from the passage. I have a caller to help me. Good evening and welcome to See Results. Hello. Hi, welcome. What's your name? Sydney. It's so nice to have you. It's Sydney. So tell me, right? Some farmers want to destroy wetlands for farming. Do you support this move? Support your answer with an example from the passage. Right, so... So first of all, tell me, do you support the move to destroy, to destroy wetlands for farming? Um, no. Okay, so I'm going to share part of the passage here, an extract from the passage, and you can read this and then tell me why not, right? Give me an, um, a supporting, a piece of supporting detail from here. That goes with that answer of you saying no. Okay. This prevents the land around them from flooding or being washed away completely. Right. So this is one benefit of the wetlands here. So if we didn't have wetlands, then we would have flooding and so on, right? So it is important. Yeah. So you do not um, support the move and that is the reason why any of here... Any of the reasons given here will be uh, the correct answer, right? Thanks for calling. Yeah. Okay. Good job so far, callers, right? And I went on. I had some more examples here. Um, if the caller did not get through the last paragraph, right? So a couple of examples given. Any of those you could present along with your answer of saying no, right? So no, because destroying wetlands will destroy the feeding grounds and habitat for many animals. We know this or no because a tourist attraction will be destroyed or no because we will not benefit from the wetlands ability to soak up flood waters or clean water. So as you can see, there are many um, benefits of having a wetland, right? Um, if you did in fact say, um, said yes, you have to give us an extremely out of the box great idea, right? In order to get that two marks. Yeah, but... Ideally, this is what the answer, or this is the answer here that we were looking for. All right, so let's see if this caller can help us. Good evening and welcome to See Results. Hi. Hi, welcome. What's your name? This is Aidan again. So Aidan, tell me, right, what is the purpose of the passage? What, can you say that again? What is the purpose of the passage? Well, so the, um, the purpose of this passage is to, is to learn about the... Uh, the um, it's to learn more about wetlands and its benefits. And its benefits. No problem. We'll take that answer. Thank you, Aidan. You're welcome. All right. So, the purpose of the passage is to inform readers about the importance of wetlands in our ecosystem or any answer just as Aidan give, right, that tells us about the purpose of it. All right. And this here, question 28. Do you think the information in this passage is important? Give a reason for your answer. Let's see if this caller can help us. Good evening and welcome to Series Hi, good afternoon. Hi, good evening, welcome. What's your name? Alyssa. So tell me, Alyssa, do you think the information in this passage is important? Yes, okay. because uh -huh. people need to know why wetlands are important. Why wetlands are important to our ecosystem, right? Yes. Okay, great job. Thanks for calling. You're right. Yes, because people need to know why wetlands are important. Right? And, of course, so that they will not destroy them, rather preserve them. Right? So, great. So, that is the end um, of the questions for the first passage. Before we go on to the um, next passage, I just want to point out to you with non-fiction passages, you see how beneficial these passages are. You may not have had knowledge before, 
right, about wetlands. And after reading such a, such a passage, you are now familiar with um, so many benefits of a wetland. So now you have ideas about, you know, why you need to do or the role you need to take as a member of society to protect the wetlands, right? So it is very informational and educational. And I urge you guys, once you read these nonfiction passages, take away a lesson from it, right? It's very, very um, informational and really good information that they share with us there. So now we are going on to a fiction passage, right? So this is more like a story, right? So it is entitled, The Kind Master. <laughs> Our master was a good man. He gave us food, good lodging, and kind words. He spoke as kindly to us as he did to his little children. We were all fond of him, and my mother loved him very much. When we saw him at the gate, when we saw him at the gate, she would neigh with joy and trot up to him. He would pat and stroke her and say, Well, old pet, and how is your little darky? I was a dull black, so he called me Daki. Then he would give me a piece of bread, which was very good. And sometimes he brought a carrot for my mo mother. All the horses would come to him, but I think we were his favorites. My mother always took him to, to, my mother always took him to the town on a market day in a light gig. There was a plowboy, Dick, who sometimes came into our field to pluck blackberries from the hedge. When he had eaten all he wanted, he would have some fun with the coals, throwing stones and sticks at them to make them gallop. We did not much mind him, for we could gallop off. But sometimes a stone would hit and hurt us. One day he was at this game and did not know that the master was in the next field, but he was there watching what was going on. Over the hedge he jumped in a snap and catching Dick by the arm. He gave him such a box on the air as made him roar with pain and surprise. As soon as we saw the master, we trotted nearer to see what went on. Bad boy, he said, bad boy. To chase the colts, this is not the first time, nor the second, but it shall be the last. There, take your money and go home. I shall not want you. I shall not want you on my farm again. So we never saw Dick anymore. Old Daniel, the man who looked after the horses, was just as gentle as our master. So we were well off. All right, so that is our fiction passage. So now we're going to open the lines. The numbers are up on your screen. Feel free to call us and help us answer uh, the following questions. All right, so the first question says, what is the name? So of two things here, the mother horse and her colt in the story. All right, so let's see if this caller can help us. Good evening and welcome to See Results. Hi, good evening. Hi, uh, afternoon. Hi, welcome. What's your name? Um, my name is Josiah. Hi, Josiah. So tell me, what is the name of the mother horse and her colt in the story? Before you give me an answer, however, um, can you give me the meaning here of the word colt? What do you think colt the, means? The here? meaning of the word colt? Yes. Is the baby of a horse. Very good, right? So, or a small horse, right? Yeah. Okay, great job. So, did you know that meaning before reading this, by chance? Yes. Okay, great. So, tell me, what is the name of the mother horse and her colt in the story? So, you can go ahead and read this if you like, just to get the names, and then you can give me your answer. Her cold name is Darky. Right. And the mother's and name was? The mother's name was... Pet, yes, that's correct. Right, so the mother's name was Pet and the cool's name was Darky. Thanks for calling. Right, so the mother's name was Pet and the cool's name was Darky. Right, now uh, this Pet was a bit tricky. You had to reread that uh, those couple of lines um, 
you know, a few times just to ensure that you had that correct, right? And I'm sure the caller did the same thing just now, right? So good job there. Next question. Based on paragraph one, state two reasons the master was considered kind. All right, so I'm going to go to paragraph one. I have a caller to help us. Good evening and welcome to see results. Hi, good evening. Hi, good evening. Hi, welcome. What's your name? Teresa. Nice to have you with us. So tell me, All right, the question was, based on paragraph one, state two reasons the master was considered kind. So I have paragraph one for you here. Okay, um, he was considered kind because he provided food and right. he used kind words. <laughs> okay, don't go as yet, Carissa. Tell me, what does um, lodging here mean? Huh? What does the word lodging mean? Do you know? Lodging, no. L lodging. Shelter. Shelter. Excellent. Did you know that before? Yes. Okay, all right. So thank you so much for calling. And your answer is correct, right? So just in case, again, if you didn't know the meaning, again, you can read it in context. Shelter, accommodation, a home, anything of that sort, right? He gave us food, good lodging, and kind words, right? So any of those two, the master was considered kind because he provided good food, good lodging, shelter, and a good home, right? And he used kind words. Sh sorry, good lodging or shelter, right? And he used kind words. So any of those will be correct. Next question here. According to the passage, who looked after the horses and what type of person was he? Right, um, we have a caller to help us. Good evening and welcome to see results. Hi, caller, are you there with us? Yes, good afternoon. Hi, what's your name? Juliana. So, Juliana, good evening, welcome. According to the passage, who looked after the horses and what type of person was he? Oh, Daniel. Right. A good, kind man. Yes. Looked after the horses. Excellent, right? So, thanks so much for calling. Your answer is correct. Thank you. You're welcome. Right, so the person who looked after the horses was Daniel. So, Daniel looked after the horses and he was a kind person or a gentle person, right? Because he, he was, like the uh, paragraph said, he was just as gentle as their master. Right. Um, some of you, if you were thinking the master was the person who looked after the horses, um, he, yes, the master interacted with the horses, but according to the passage, they specifically put in this line here, right, to tell you uh, that Daniel was the person who looked after the horses, although the master was the person who interacted with them as well, right? So the correct answer was Daniel. How would you describe Dick? Support your answer with an example from the passage. Good evening and welcome to see results. Hi, good evening. Hi, my name is Roshan. Nice to have you with Roshan. us. Uh -huh. Roshan, right? Yeah. Okay, so Roshan, how would you describe Dick? I would describe Dick as a very rude person as he Tells rocks at the um, animals. Right. So um, um, gallop off. Okay, great. He was a rude person, you said? Yes. Okay. Um, okay, we'll take that answer, right? Because he threw rocks at the horses. Gallop. Horses. Okay, great job. Thanks for calling, Roshan. Right, so Dick was mean, wicked, bad, rude even, right? Because he threw sticks and stones at the coals for fun. So great job, Roshan. Right. What is the meaning of the phrase, in a snap, right, um, which is on line 14, as used in the story? As I often told you when we were doing poetry and they gave you a line here, um, it's because they, you know, it's easy for you to identify, well, which line I'm going to find this phrase in, right? So you don't have to reread the entire um, passage. You just simply go to line 14 and you read, and read that, those lines or that line, right? So I have pointed it out to you here. Right, um, so the caller, good evening and welcome to see results. Hi caller, are you there with us? Hello. Hi, welcome. What's your name? My name is Mahadi. So, nice to have you with us. Um, did you see the question by chance? I'm just going to go back to the question there. What okay. is the meaning of the phrase, in a snap, as used in the story? Right, so, in a snap, 
I highlighted it for you. Uh, can you see it? Any snap means quick, as fast as possible. Yes. Excellent, right? Thanks for calling. Your answer you. is correct. Right? So that phrase there, in a snap, means quickly, at once, in no time, right? As fast as possible. Anything of that sort, any synonym, anything along those lines will also be correct and you will be given your one mark, right? So if you have gotten all the um, answers so far from the first passage, correct, and the second passage up until this point, excellent job, good going. If you, you know that you got one or two wrong, you know, that's okay. Keep trying, um, you know, learn from your mistakes, what you can even do. You know, uh, when we're finished with the live, you can probably even go back, look at the video, reread the passage if necessary, and attempt to answer that question again. So, next question. Do you think the master in the story was most likely a young man or an old man? Right? Support your answer with evidence from the story. Right? Um, so, let's take this call to help us. Good evening and welcome to see results. Hi, Hello. good evening. Hi, welcome. What's your name? Just uh, Thomas. Nice to have you with us. So tell me, do you think the master in the story was most likely a young man or an old man? An um, old man. Okay. And what is your evidence to support your answer? Because in the first paragraph, it says how old has Can you repeat that, please? I'm not hearing it too well. In the first paragraph, yes. it says old pet, which means that he had the pet for a long while, so he probably was old. Okay, no problem. Right, I'll take that answer, and you will get it correct, right? Because you gave us supporting evidence to um, support your answer, obviously. So thanks so much for calling. Right? Um, okay. So... But we can also look at that um, question in another way, right? You can say, I think he was young because he was able to jump over the hedge in a snap, which we said was quickly, right? Or because he had little children. Now, either answer, I would say is correct as long as you give the appropriate supporting evidence, right? So somebody would have said old, just as the caller did, right? And some of you may even think that he was young, right? So, but that was an excellent point that the caller pointed out where he said, um, well, old pet, meaning that the pet was around for a long time, meaning probably he was a little boy when he had the pet and he still has the pet, right? So he, he grew up with this pet, right? So I like that some children are thinking out of the box like that. Excellent job. Why did the master give Dick money before he sent him home? Let's see if this caller can help us. Good evening and welcome to see results. Hi, good evening. Hi, hello. Hi, what's your name? This is Aidan again. So Aidan, why did the master give Dick money before he sent him home? Um. So you can go ahead and identify that line and then you can explain it to me. Okay, can you zoom in? Sure. Um, you can probably read from this, from the indent here, bad boy. It's actually right here. Yes. Right. Um, the, the master d gave Dick money because, so he would never come on his farm again. But why? Because he was pelting the coated stones. Excellent, right? Uh, and what is your, what will be, okay, yes, actually that's correct, right? So he gave him money before he sent him home because he would, uh, actually, looking at the question again, just give me one second. Why did the master give Dick money before he sent him home? Right? Um, um, can you think of another answer? Why? Who was Dick to the master? Like an enemy? No. Or he used to work for the master? Right. He was employed, right? So he was an employee of the master, right? So he gave him. So right. why did the master give Dick money before? Because he was used to employed. Work. Right. Excellent job, right? Yeah. Thanks for calling. You're welcome. Right? So. Right. Um, 
I also had to read that question twice there, so it's very easy for you to get confused or give the wrong answer, as you just saw, right? But once you reread that question, the correct answer um, should come to you, right? So the master gave him money before he sent him home, as they worked as a plowboy on the farm, right? So he was an employee, therefore. All right, next question. State one quality displayed by the master in the last two paragraphs of the story. Give an example to support your answer. Good evening and welcome to see results. Hi, caller. Good evening. I'm not hearing this caller, so I'm just going to give it a second. I'm sure they are there. Good evening and welcome to see results. Okay, I'm not hearing it, so we're just probably going to take another call in place of that. Hi. Hi, welcome. What's your name? This is Aidan again. So, Aidan, state one quality displayed by the master in the last two paragraphs of the story. And you have to give me an example to support one that answer. Quality. Right? Can you say that again? Um. What was the first quality that you said? He was very protective of the horses. Yeah, okay. Because he said to Dick that he was a bad boy and it was not the first time or the second and it will be the last time he will be pelting stones at the court. Right. And, um, okay, well, great. So that was your line to support your answer, right? Yes. Okay, thanks for calling. You're welcome. All right, so the master was fair or just. Um, it could also say protective, as the caller said, and they gave the support and evidence. So whatever, um, whatever quality you give us here, ensure that your evidence supports that. In this case, we're saying that the master was fair or just. Right? He made sure Dick was punished for his wrongdoing by firing him, but he still paid him his wages. So remember that question where we said, um, who was Dick to him? Right? And why was he given the money, etc.? Because he worked for him. Here, this shows that the master was fair because although he was doing something wrong, right, or not liked, um, he still gave him his money, which proved that the master was fair or just. Also, yes, he was protective, and I do agree with that answer as well. All right, let's go to this question. Do you think Dick made a good decision by playing the game? Right, give a reason for your answer. We have a caller to help us. Good evening, and welcome to see results. Hi, good evening. Hello. Hi, welcome. What's your name? Hello. Hi, good evening. Can you hear me? Gina. Call, are you there? Yes, I can. Okay, so what's your name? Yes, I'm here. Okay, I'm not hearing it too well, but I hope that you can hear me. Do you think that Dick made a good decision by playing the game? We lost that call there. And we do have another caller to help us. Good evening. Good evening and welcome to see results. Okay. Hi, are you there with us? Okay, we lost that one as well. Right, so do you think Dick make a, made a good decision by playing the game? We have a caller again. Good evening and welcome to see results. Hi. Hi, Hi. welcome. What's your name? Question. Hi, good evening. Hi, can I get... Can I do the next question, please? Sure. Um, can you see the question on the board right now? Yeah. Right. Do you think Dick made a good decision by playing the game? Give a reason for your answer. Right? So. Okay. So I think no. Right. It wasn't a good decision. Since it could really hurt and injure the horses. Okay. Great job. We'll take that answer, right? Thank um, you. Right, so there was also another part to that answer which he could have said, no, because he made the master angry and got fired, right? This was the second part here, or because he hurt the horses. So yes, that part was correct, and if you want, you could have added that part as well, right? So thanks so much for that. And we do have a final question here, and I'm going to take this call to end this session. Good evening, and welcome to see results. Hello. Hi, welcome. What's your name? My name is Javid. Good afternoon, Miss. Good afternoon. Welcome. So, do you think the master was right in the way he treated Dick? Give a reason for your answer. 
Miss, can I see the passage, please? Sure. Um, I'll have to go back. Just give me one second there. Um, in the meantime, you can think about it. Do you think that the master was right in the way that he treated Dick? And I'm just going to go to the end there. Right. So it's about here. Okay, hold on. So can you see it? Okay. Yeah, I can see it. Okay, go ahead. Yes, I think the master was right how he treated Dick because Dick attacked the horses. Right. Dick attacked the horses, threatening them. Thank you so much for calling. You're welcome, man. Okay, bye. Right, so, yes, they deserve to be fired because he repeatedly hurt the horses. Or oh, yes, he was he was not fired. Or if he was sorry, if he was not fired, he would have continued to hurt the horses. Right? So that brings us to the end of two passages for today. One fiction, one non-fiction. Right, um, be sure to join us tomorrow, guys. Tomorrow we have creative writing and ELA again. So tomorrow we're going to be continuing with our comprehension skills. And of course, um, creative writing, where we're looking at both expository and narrative style writing. So and before we go, I must tell you um, about our Edmodo class. You know, it's an online educational uh, class. It's a community for learners where we post quizzes. All right, um, it's simple to join. You simply enter the class code here become a member or a participant in a couple of seconds. Both students and parents can join. Um, however, only students will be allowed to take the quizzes. Parents, you will be there to supervise and monitor your child's progress along the way. Just remember, um, we have quizzes weekly as we have them this week already for math, ELA, and creative writing, which was based on the work that we completed last week, right? So make sure, you know, I know some of you, well, all of us actually at home, Right, students, and you have some extra time, please join the Edmodo class if you are not already a participant. And of course, if you are, make sure and complete those quizzes, right? So, you know, it was a pleasure being in your company, guys. Uh, do, have, do have a wonderful evening and, of course, practice uh, proper personal hygiene. We want to be very cautious with uh, all that is happening right now. And have a wonderful evening, and I will look forward to seeing you all tomorrow. Assalamu alaikum. Good evening, guys.